Hi students welcome to English class It is the chapter blooming part 5 Let's recollect what was taught in the previous class In the previous class the main topic was all about the gujars What did we learn about the gujars We came to know that they were the nomadic graziers they lived in the grass hut they wore trousers tight and wrinkled at the ankles they wore large silver rings made of melted rupees and are junglies so let's enter into today's topic it is about sibya and other ladies moving to the hillside to collect the paper grass so in order to collect the paper grass it is compulsory that they need to cross the river let's see how author describes the way the women crosses the river ha now there was a river twinkling between the trees sunlit beyond dark trunks they could hear it rushing along so author describes where the river is there was a river twinkling between the trees sunlit beyond dark trunks so between the trees and the uh, between the trees the sunlight comes into the river sunlight enters to the waters of the river and they could hear it rushing along and one could hear the sound of the river rushing the women came out on the shore and made for the shipping stone so one by one women started coming out on the shore and made for the stepping stones they have reached on one side of the river the shore of the river and they are now making for the stepping stone they are now trying to cross the river by climbing the stepping stones i have told you what stepping stone is before that is the stones which kept in the river so that you could get a grip for crossing it especially it will be placed in the shallow part of the river they had plenty to laugh and bicker about so these women there is a group of ladies there so when they were trying to cross the river author is telling that they had plenty to laugh and bicker about you know what's meant by bicker bicker means arguing or quarreling over petty issues simply arguing or quarreling for no reason or for simply small petty issues as they approached the river in a noisy crowd so what the women were doing while they are trying to cross the river is they are laughing and bickering over small small petty issues so it is a noisy crowd over there they girded up their skirts so as to jump from stone to stone and they clang their sickles and forks together so first of all as the first step to cross the river they girded up their skirts girded means to raise a skirt so that it becomes easy for them to cross and started jumping from stone to stone and they clang their sickles and foreheads together over their shoulders to have ease in movement also they carry their sickles and uh, other things towards their shoulders so that they can cross very easily they shout to their corals about the gush of water anyway they were shouting loudly while they were crossing you know why reason is noise frightens crocodiles the bigger mugger the big mugger did not move and all the women crossed in safety to the other bank so these women being the junglies they know very well that if there is noise it will frighten the crocodile crocodiles will not come near us so hearing this noise the same thing happened the big mucker did not move and all the women crossed in safety to the other bank so they managed to cross the river safely here they had to climb a still inside to get the grass but all fell it with a will and sliced away at it wherever there was a foothold to be old so after reaching the hill side they had to get the grass so once they reach over there it is their duty to cut the grass but all fell it with a will no one were idle all took it as their responsibility fell it with a will means to do a task as their own responsibility 
and sliced away at it wherever there was a foothold to be had and started sliding the uh, slicing the paper grass wherever they could get down below them ran the broad river pouring powerfully out from its deep narrow pools among the cold cliffs and shadows spreading into warm shallows lit by kingfishers so down ran the river from its narrow pools among the cold cliffs and shadows spreading into warm shallows lit by kingfishers author is giving a very good description about the river here pouring powerfully out from its deep narrow pools from somewhere from a <coughs> deep narrow pool the river was entering and spreading its warm shallows lit by the kingfishers and then it was spreading into the shallow part that is from a narrow pool it originated then it is moving through the cold cliffs and finally it is spreading in a narrow shore or towards a narrow part with a sorry Uh, towards a pond as a warm shallow great turtles live there so in this river which are the creatures that you can find great turtles live there there are turtles and marsia marsia means it's a kind of fish it's a big fish weighing more than 100 pounds crocodiles too of course you can find crocodiles too so this river gave habitation for turtles mars here as well as crocodiles sometimes you could see them lying on those slabs of clay over there but they were none to be seen at that moment so author is telling sometimes one could find the crocodiles lying on the slabs of clay but at that moment one cannot find one could not find any crocodiles over there When Sibia was working, wind coming across hundreds of miles of trees cooled her sweating body. So the place where Sibia was working, that is on the top of the cliff, wind came across hundreds of miles. A cold wind came from somewhere, which cooled her sweating body, and she could look down over the river as if she were a bird, and the light girl could look down the river as if. a bird could do although she did not dare to stop for a moment under a mother's eye her imagination took her in sweep in swooping flight over the bright water and golden air air to the banks where she had played as a child so although she did not dare to stop while working it was her duty to work with full responsibility she know that it's not right to stop and dream in between so she did not stop her work in between but kept on imagining between her work about the bright water and the golden air to the banks where she had played as a child she was enjoying the beauty of nature or she was uh, uh, yearning to play once more on the banks of those river as she has done in her childhood days in those caves above the high water mark of the highest flood she had stored some little bowls molded of clay while they hardened so some of the childish plays or the pranks which you would do as a child it is done by sibia also though she is forced to work though she is a girl made to toil it doesn't mean that she is no more a child she has not reached to the level of a woman she is not as matured as a uh, big ladies are she is still a child many childish plays and childish desires are still there deep in the minds of sibia in the mind of sibia so in those cavelets cavelets means small caves they are moving through the forest so one can one can find small small caves and so in those cavelets above the high water mark of the highest flood that is being a forest and somewhere near to the river it's common to have floods so during flooding time uh, if uh, flood was uh, if flood is quite common over there 
each flood time the level up to which the water might have ri- raised will be different so high water mark means the maximum level up to which the water has reached in that cave that is one year it may be if it is only 3 cm next year it can be 6 another year it can be 10 so the highest water level during the flood in that cave is 10 cm so what the girl did is that in those cavelets above the high water mark of the highest flood she had showed some little bowls molded of clay she has made some small clay bowls she made some small clay bowls and she had showed it over there just like a small kid feed us various things and keep it somewhere where no one can find if there were anything that could be used for coloring they would be they would look fine painted with marigolds and elephants so author is telling if there is anything that could be used for coloring being a poor girl she didn't get any item to color that clay clay pot an author is telling if there is something that could be used for coloring they would look fine painted with marigolds and elephants the girl would have painted it with the pictures of marigolds and elephants child the sharp word the glare of a mother's angry sweating face pulled sabia back to work and they toiled on so while she was imagining all these for a moment she was in some other world she was not doing any work so finding this a sharp voice called her from behind the sharp word glare of a mother's angry sweating face pulled sabia back to work so the child that it word was addressed to sibia by her mother it was in a form of a sharp word so it was a reminder given to sibia to start working again so the glare of a mother's angry sweating face pulled sibia back to work and they toiled on again the girl started toiling the girl she was made to toil in her life she started working hard But at last, it was time to go back to see to their animals an evening meal. So now it's time for them to go back home. They have collected enough paper grass, and it is time for them to go to their home and to see their animals an evening meal. They loaded the loaded uh, the loaded women set out to cross the river again. So they have come crossing the river. After collecting the paper grass, they are planning to move back by crossing the. river sibya hung back she would just stood a little bit and run and see if the little clay cups were still there in the cave waiting to be painted and used so sibya hung back she simply kept apart for some time reason is she would just stood a little bit she thought that she will waste a little time by running and seeing if the little clay cups were still in the cave cave she just wanted to run and check whether the little clay cups which she has kept above the highest water mark in that cave is still safe or not waiting to be painted and used so that she could paint it once and use it some other day although the women were now tired and loaded they still talk so now what's the condition of women when they are going back to their home they are now tired and loaded also they have got a great load on their back other one said when they are going they can jump they can run and they can walk swiftly but while coming back you cannot do so you remember it yeah so now the women are tired and loaded they still talk but they keep on talking they should talk why should they talk if they talk no crocodiles or no creatures will approach them noise frightens everyone especially crocodile those in front yell to those behind so they will be talking loudly they will be shouting or yelling loudly those who are standing in front will be yelling to those who are there behind they cross the river safely and disappear up the track into the trees on the other side so by doing so they cross the river safely and finally they disappear up the tracks into the trees on the other side even the voices died away 
So after some time, even their voice could not be heard. Now, silence fell. Now there is no more noise in the forest. It is silence everywhere. Sibya came down alone to the stepping stone. So what did Sibya do? In between, she took a gap and she went to the cavelets to check whether all her clay cups are safe there. So after checking all these, after dawdling a little over there, she came back. She came down alone to the stepping stone. Now our little girl is all alone to cross the river. The light of evening was striking up the George, pink into the ultraviolet shadows. So by the time the light of evening was striking up the George, pink into ultraviolet shadows, the color of the sky is also changing. From pink, it is coming to ultraviolet shadows or it is becoming dark everywhere. Now that the sun was off, now that the sun was off it, the water poured almost invisible among the stones with no reflection to show where it began. The sun is no more in the sky too. So the water is somewhat invisible now with no reflection to show where it began and one could not identify from where the water began and so it's dark everywhere. Sibia stepped onto the first stone. So being a girl born and brought up in the forest, a Sibia is not a friend like us. Though she is alone, though it's getting dark, she decided to cross the river. She stepped onto the first stone. She was heavily weighted. Her muscles stretched and aching. Now the condition of Sibia, as author said before, she is also very tired. Her muscles are also aching. The hay, fo the hay fog squeaked in the packed dry grass and dug into her collarbone so close under the skin in spite of sari bunched up to the pad. So she was really aching. It was a uh, great, uh, she was aching a lot. That is the hay fog which was used for cutting the grass was packed along with the dry grass and dug into her collarbone. That is she kept it along with the grass behind a sack. And the way she has kept the uh, hay fog is in such a manner that it was touching a collar bone close under the skin. Though there were saris bunched in order to make her uh, collar bone and everything comfortable, it couldn't do so. It dug deep into her collar bone and it was creating much pain painful severe. So let's conclude a chapter over here. And the next class, we will continue with the remaining. So, till we meet again, goodbye.